Yo, what up, what up? It's your boy Vinny Dangerous back again with another beat breakdown. This time I'll be breaking down my track Hells on Earth Part 2 from my album Dream Till It's Over. Without further ado, let's get right into the session. Alright, now this was actually voted on by the members of my broadcast channel on Instagram. I appreciate y'all. Make sure you join that at Vinny Dangerous on Instagram to vote on the next one because I throw the polls up after each one just to see what the people want to see next. And I honestly, I was really surprised when I threw this one on. It was kind of like the last option that I thought to put on there. And I was really surprised that people really wanted to see this session. Like it overwhelmingly beat out every other uh, option that was on there. So thank y'all for that. And it's interesting. This is one of uh, the very first beats that I made that ended up on the album. I think I was just getting back into production, so this might have been like my fifth or sixth track that I made after uh, getting back into making my own beats. And it was one of the first ones that immediately inspired me. Um, so this track, and this is like a weird concept because I kind of do this thing where I like to uh, mix with intention. Uh, like I had this beat sounding like completely different before I wrote the song to it. And I, okay, it's, it's gonna sound weird, but I actually kind of made it sound bad on purpose. And my reason for that is that the song itself is like this apocalyptic type of song. I wanted it to sound really grimy and gritty. Like even when I mixed my vocals, I intentionally like distorted it to make it sound like almost like you're getting like a transmission. Like I think about movies like Terminator or Alien, you know, those movies where like you might get a transmission, it's really uh, garbled up and distorted from like a intercom or a walkie talkie or, you know, just some kind of communicator where it sounds like real garbled up and messed up. And that's kind of where the idea of the mixing process kind of went into this. I wanted to sound uh grimy and uh dirty the vocals sound just as grimy as dirty as the beat is and yeah like so this is the session here um you know it's color coded i tried to like do something different to kind of get an idea of like what i'm dealing with whenever i open this back up so i started off with this chord progression here it is from nexus now this is like one of the first plugins that I actually bought back in the day when I was first making FL Studio, uh, making beats on FL Studio, excuse me, on like FL Studio 9, I think. And it's just a real simple chord progression. I, the original chords right here are actually like that. Uh, this would be like a, a C triad. And I just pitched them up to kind of give it more of a, a bigger, wider feel. So this is what it sounds like by itself. Just really like dark and ethereal. Like uh, in, a, in a sense, like whenever I'm uh, listening to this track, like when I put that together, I was thinking of like black clouds overhead, like a really like dark dystopian kind of feel. And that was the first thing that kind of came to my mind when starting off with that what would be the next instrument oh yeah let me go into the session because i don't think i did a lot yeah with this chord i only just did a little bit of eqing uh took out a lot of lows took out some highs and did a little dip right here where i saw like a lot of or i heard a lot of build up that i didn't like the way it sounded but i didn't really do a lot like i said in my last video i don't really do a lot of uh individual mixing for the most part unless it just really needs it or i have like this really creative uh idea for how to transform the sound but for the most part i do most of my mixing on the buses so a lot of these you can see i only got like the parametric eq or this tdr nova maybe some compression you know like some side chain compression you know just stuff like that and not a lot of not a lot of mixing outside of that though the main driving force in this track is this is this really distorted 808 that I got uh, out of like this unison, uh, like this free unison like drum pack or something. And as soon as I heard it, I was like, I gotta use this. 
I, I probably have tried to use it in other tracks, but it just didn't work the same. But I uh, saw so this is probably the only track that I've used it on. But this is what it sounds like by itself. Yeah, see, really, really distorted, like really big feel. Matter of fact, I'll play a little bit of it, of like what the verse sounds like without the hook. I mean, without that 808 in it, just to kind of, kind of give you an idea, because this really like ties everything together. Yeah, don't have the same feel without it. But when you add it in, see so like a huge, huge difference in the sound. Uh, well, I mean, there's a little bit of the drums here. I guess I could go ahead and get on to that. Um, not really, wasn't really a lot that went into the drums. It's just like a, a kick, a clap, these perk hits this triangle hit and this uh crazy well not even really that crazy but it's uh this hi-hat pattern that i created and this is what the drums sound like by themselves you know just to kind of help it give it that bounce uh i routed all of that to a, a bus and all I did was use this compressor, uh, this compressor, compressor, and it is one of my favorites. Like it's one of my favorites to throw on drums, especially if I want something to like really hit hard. This is definitely my go-to, especially for like trap, trap drums and stuff. Then I just had this EQ and this fast distortion, and I routed it all to this mix bus right here. But it's really simple, didn't do a lot with it. Uh, so I copied those same chords from the Nexus and put it on this IOTA Mini. Like I said uh, on my Mama's Cutlass video, this is like my go-to plugin for like layers. Like if I, it's to the point where I try to find a layer in another instrument before I go to it. Cause I really want to try to switch it up a little bit, but this is almost like a if it ain't broke don't fix it type of situation like this thing just always comes in clutch for me when it comes to layering and this is what that's this is what this sounds like by itself <laughs> you know just something simple uh i don't think i did a lot with this one either uh yeah i just did an eq on that one as well uh, i think the only couple of things I might have did more with would be like the kick which I think I just needed to fill it out more and that just has a compressor and an EQ and then with the uh, Vox sample that I'm gonna get into I added a little bit of reverb on top of it just to kind of give it a little bit more space but outside of that I didn't really do much with it um, so this is where like this choir sound comes in and you kind of see some of the, the notes are shorter than others. Uh, the velocities are different. That was just me playing it. I think I was just messing around and I came up with this little like, just steady like choir stabs that really gives it that haunting feeling. Like I said, like kind of like this dystopian uh, end of the world kind of feel. And that is this K1V plugin. I honestly don't use this as much, but this just like the very first preset. Like I was trying to find something, I wanted to figure out what can kind of help convey like the feeling that I was trying to get with this track. And I just stumbled across this and which that one is in on channel 12. What did I do with that? Yeah, I use this, uh, this distortion on here. Love this thing. Like, you know, just be careful with it if you got it, because it can get really wild really fast. Uh, I just used the default preset just to add a little bit of distortion. 
and then um, some EQ to cut out the, the, a lot of the lows and just a little bit of the highs and just blends it in enough. Like by itself, it doesn't sound that great. But in the context of the of the song, this is what it sounds like in the hook. Like that in the IOTA mini layer. Like sometimes individual tracks don't really give you that feel. It isn't until you have everything together and it really ties in that you can kind of see the full vision outside of that all i do i got this reverse riser here with that one all i did was put a little bit of like ping pong delay on it and you know again cut out a lot of the lows making sure it wasn't clashing with the 808 and the kick and this box sound that just kind of comes in every blue moon you know just something real simple give it some eye candy uh and it's always hits uh on a part of the song where i'm i guess i'm saying something a little bit more prov provocative on this track like when i was writing this one this was like my opportunity to just kind of let loose a little bit um shout out to my boy combo i got the inspiration to write this song because he was li listening to my last album uh the album right before this one uh well not right before this one it was the 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 tr the album right before this one in the trilogy dream to escape hell and he talked about the original hells on earth which was produced by Death Stars, a producer that I met on YouTube. And, you know, it he was talking about how, you know, a lot of the stuff that I was talking about on that song was almost like a prediction, because I wrote it in 2017. It was released in 2018. And, you know, stuff like, almost stuff like COVID and, you know, like the current and the previous administration and the stuff that happened, you know, just, a lot of stuff, if you go back and listen to the lyrics, it's hard for me to like really kind of pinpoint exactly what he predicted or what he said I predicted in that song because I was really just venting. It was just, I was in a bad place in my life, stressed to hell, and actually recorded that song drunk. I tried it with this one, but didn't really get all the way through the same way. Uh, so I really just wanted to match that energy Cause it was a, uh, I really wanted to do a sequel. I never do remixes. I never do sequels to my songs. And with this particular song, I felt like I really wanted to tap into that because it was a great way to tie it back to that last album. And just a lot of those same feelings that I had when I wrote the original, I, I felt like were stuff that was you know, present in my life at that time when I wrote this one. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the song. Uh, I could play a little bit of the verse or the hook going into the verse. One more thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, so there's not a lot of, you know, sounds going into this one. Um, another thing I didn't mention on my last video got me got me fucked up when I talked about, you know, uh, you know, simplifying your production with not using a lot of sounds. A lot of uh, something else that helps kind of break up break it up to where you don't need a lot going on is utilizing space, like taking out certain things bringing them back in um like this breakdown part right here like 
that's just me taking the main uh, the chord progression out with the pads and just letting the drums and the 808 just play out like towards the end before bringing everything back in and then in the beginning of this verse taking out the clap for a few bars taking out the hi-hats for a few bars you know just those little things and in certain pockets of the song just really help you know kind of break it up you know you, there's always something changing there's always something different and it definitely uh helps fill up the space keeps the song from sounding monotonous while also not just piling on a bunch of sounds for the sake of it but yeah that's pretty much it that's uh hell's on earth part two you know thank you for watching if you check this video out Make sure that you leave a like on this video, leave a comment, let me know how you felt about this beat breakdown, and let me know what other songs you want me to do next. Make sure that if you have not heard this song or heard Dream Till It's Over, you click the link in the description. I will link it to the Bandcamp link, as well as my website, www.vinnydangerous.com. And yeah, again, join the broadcast channel, and when I put up the poll for the next beat breakdown, you can let me know which one you would like to see me do next. But until next time, it's your boy Vinny Dangerous. Much love.